All right, good afternoon. So my name is James Wildman. I work for the Animal Rights Foundation of Florida. Now I do want to apologize in advance for any disturbances that might occur throughout this presentation. You see, I got two roommates who get quite rambunctious when I present, and they haven't quite picked up on the concept of working from home, even after nine months or so. Uh, Natty, the tan girl, she likes to talk, and well, Grady just likes to follow. But I got some dog treats, so let's just see they're, they'll be on their best behavior. Now, I'm typically giving this presentation in a classroom setting with an audience in front of me. So to make the presentation more interactive, I've included a number of slides with questions throughout the presentation. So when you see a slide with a question, please feel free to type your answer in the chat box. Now, since all the answers are multiple choice, you simply have to type the letters A, B, C, or D. So let me show what I mean. Now, what would it take to inspire you to change something that you've been doing your whole life? So A, a miracle, B, money, C, a lot of money, or D, 60 minutes. Well, I can't produce miracles and I don't got much money, but I do have 60 minutes, well, actually 45. So let's begin. Now, let me ask you a hypothetical rhetorical question. Imagine if your homeland was invaded by an alien species with an intelligence and strength far superior to humans. And in their exploration of Earth, these aliens discover that many of this planet's resources can be exploited for their own pleasure. Soon enough, this group of aliens have turned rainforest into barren wastelands, oceans and lakes into dead zones, and added immense amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So my question for you is, if your homeland was invaded by aliens who cut down the forest, poison the water, and contaminate the air you breathe, would you do anything to stop them? Well, the truth is the rainforests are being cut down. In fact, one to two acres of rainforest are cleared every second. The oceans and lakes have become dead zones. A 2008 study in the journal Science found that more than 400 dead zones worldwide. And greenhouse gases are being emitted at an alarming rate. Today's atmosphere contains 42% more carbon dioxide than it did at the start of the industrial era. So the real question is, are you going to do something to stop it? Well, the good news is there isn't any alien species we need to confront. We have the power to change this, but first we need to understand how we got here. So let's begin. Now, how many of you have seen the movie, The Matrix? Well, there's a scene in the very beginning of the film where the main character is presented with two pills, one blue, one red, and he has to make a choice. If you choose the blue pill, he falls asleep, and when he wakes up, everything will be exactly the way it's always been. If you choose the red pill, he finally learns the truth. I am here to give you that red pill. But let me make it very clear to you. I'm not here to tell you what to do, how to think, how to feel, even what to eat. I am simply here to provide with information. Now, what you do with that information is solely up to you. So what does the matrix look like? Let me show you. Now, despite what you might be thinking, these two circles are not equal. I repeat, these two circles are not equal. One is in fact larger than the other. What I need you to do is determine which one that is. So, do you think the blue is larger than the red, or do you think the red is larger than the blue? Now, before I said anything about these two circles, what was your first instinct in terms of their size? They look the same. The reason why they look the same is because in fact they are the same. These two circles are equal. So what do we learn? That you could be manipulated like that to believe in something that goes against your natural instinct. And it doesn't take very much. Now just imagine if as a child you were taught the lie that the blue circle is larger than the red, but that the red is larger than the blue, that lie becomes part of your reality. And if you say the lie enough times, you actually convince yourself that's the truth. And if enough people are taught that lie, well, now that lie becomes part of the culture. And then if that culture passes that misinformation along to the next generation, their children, well, now that lie becomes tradition. And we have to remember is tradition and morality, what we believe to be right, are not always the same. Can you think of any traditions that we once had in the United States of America that thankfully today, we no longer have? Less than 200 years ago, slavery was a tradition in this country. A hundred years ago, women didn't have the right to vote. And less than 60 years ago, segregation was a part of this culture. But as we evolve as a culture, so do our traditions. So is our way of thinking. You see, the matrix is simply a story. And this story is being told again and again and again. In fact, if you believe the image on the carton is where you're getting your milk from, you're deceiving yourself. This is a fantasy. It only exists in your head. 
It's a blue pill fed you by the industry to get you to buy their product. This is the matrix, the lie we tell ourselves about where our food is coming from. You see, the reality is far more disturbing. 90 to 95% of the milk, the meat, and the eggs that we consume in the United States are coming from these conditions. Now, this is called factory farming. This is where you take thousands of hens, pigs, and cows. You can find them into warehouses. In fact, every year in the United States, 9 billion, right? 9 billion cows, pigs, and chickens are being slaughtered for food. So what that works out to be is that every second in the United States, 300 animals are killed, just like that. So 300, 600, 900, 1,200. By the time this presentation is over, over 1 million animals will have been slaughtered. Now, how is it possible we can kill 300 animals like that without even questioning it? Because of the story. You see, the story justifies the action. In fact, if you say it enough times, you actually convince yourself that's the truth. Now, how many of you were taught as a child that you need to eat meat to get protein? I know I was. How many of you were taught you need to drink cow's milk to get strong bones? Cow's milk, not dog milk, not cat milk, not rat milk, not mouse milk, not elf milk, not giraffe milk, not chimp milk, gorilla milk, not rhino milk, not hippo milk, not the milk from your own mother. No, you need to drink liquid creatures that drip, drip, drip from a cow's udder to get strong bones. So let's find out if the matrix is telling the truth. Now, the first story that we've all been taught is that our diet is natural. Well, let's find out just how natural our diet really is. Let's take a three-year-old from any country in the world. Put that three-year-old in the room and line up five animals in front of that three-year-old. A pig, a dog, a cow, a cat, and a chicken. You think the three-year-old's going to know which one to pet and which one to eat? What's the three-year-old most likely going to try to do? Pet them all. The three-year-old's going to be taught, no, 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 no. Don't pet the pig. Eat the pig. Pet the dog. Love the dog. This is what we were taught. We did not choose our diet. Our diet is a learned behavior. Our diet was chosen to us by our parents based upon a cultural story. If we grew up somewhere else, we might be eating dogs and cats right now. But I guarantee you this, if we were given the choice as a child, most of us would not be eating animals because most children don't want to hurt animals and no child want to pay somebody else to hurt the animal for them. Look, think about it this way. Put a baby in a crib. Put a right side of a baby chick and left side of a strawberry. Which one do you think the baby's going to try to play with and which one do you think the baby's going to try to eat? Most likely the baby's going to try to play with the thing that's moving and try to pick the thing that's not, but we try to put it in our mouth. If the baby tries to eat the chick, what's the chick going to do? Peck, scream, run away. Now, if you walked into a room with a baby in a crib, playing with a strawberry and chewing on the head of a live chick, <laughs> what would you think of this baby? You can allow this crazy, savage, psychotic, demonic, Satan baby play with your baby? It's a play date? You see, if it's not right for a baby to cause harm to an animal, even though they don't know any better, why has it become more acceptable as we get older when we do know the difference between a baby chick and a strawberry? And the question is, do we actually find it acceptable to cause harm to an animal? Let's find out. If you were to walk outside right now and you saw somebody taking a baseball bat to a dog's head, what would you do? My guess is you'd take action, you'd intervene. And why? Because you recognize it for what it is. It's animal abuse, it's animal cruelty. But what about if you to walk outside right now and you saw somebody taking a baseball bat to a pig's head? Would you not do the same thing and feel the same way? And why? Because you recognize the similarities between these two animals and not the differences. You know these two animals are equal, just like the two circles are equal, but always tell you a story to go against your natural instinct. You know these two animals are equal. Every time you sit down for a meal, you create that inequality doesn't actually exist. And to change the baseball bat to a butcher's knife, change the man and the pig from being outside to a factory farm far, far away. When it's out of sight, it's out of mind. We pay for that very thing we'd never want done in front of us. Look, think about it this way. Take two babies, one white, one black, put a room together. You think they care about the color of their skin? Of course not. So what do they want to do? They just want to play. So racism is a learned behavior. Nobody is born a racist. Hatred is something that is taught, passed down from generation to generation. We have been taught to view one animal differently from the other. We have been taught to believe that the dog deserves to live and the pig deserves to die. But in reality, we recognize their equality. We recognize they share the same needs. And most importantly, we recognize they share the same feelings. So let's take a look at how we're taking their feelings into consideration. So I'm going to show you a video right now, and uh, it's a disturbing video. I apologize, but I'm not, I'm not trying to make you upset. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm simply here to provide you with information. My goal is very simple. I'm trying to promote health and compassion. I am not your enemy. However, if you find this video too upsetting, simply put your head down.
But if you cannot bear to watch it, maybe you shouldn't be eating it. It's only two minutes, so please don't leave. Um, after the video, we're going to look at the health and environmental consequences of raising animals for food. The reason why I'm focusing on health first is because if I think I just go right to the environment and you still think that you need to eat meat, dairy, eggs, and fish to be healthy or to survive, then there's really no point about talking the environment. So we will cover the environment at the end, talk about the health after the video. By the way, this is where 90 to 95% of the meat, dairy, and eggs come from in the United States. And again, it is graphic. Don't have to watch it. Only two minutes. I'm actually showing you a version that's not as graphic as I normally would show in a classroom, but uh, it's a little bit more of a challenge being virtually. So here we go. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can put it in the chat box. Uh, this is a 90 minute presentation cut down to 45 minutes. So um, it's gonna be a little tight, but here we go. If for some reason you can't hear or, or, um, or see the video, please let me know, just vocally let me know, but I think this should work. If I could talk to animals that are being confined and, and abused now in factory farms, I would say I'm sorry for what we're doing to you. Um, I wish it wasn't this way, and I, I'm doing everything I know to stop it. And um, hopefully we will be able to stop it. There's not really a whole lot of good you can say. I mean, you just gotta, um, just gotta hope that it can stop and hope that people will recognize the harm we're causing and will choose a different way. Meat, milk, and eggs come from real animals. They don't just come from the grocery store. And these animals desire to live and they want to be free of pain and suffering and fear. And on today's farms, these animals only know fear and pain at human hands. They never know human kindness, they never know mercy. And when people buy these products, they are unwittingly supporting that type of cruelty and that type of callousness. The workers, you know, they have to lose part of their heart. You know, they have to lose, they have to shut their eyes to certain aspects of what they're doing. Can you imagine what it would be like to cut the throats of animals for eight hours a day. It's a bloody, violent job, and nobody should have to do it. I don't know what it means that, you know, we can participate in such cruelty without paying attention to it, without caring about it, without wanting to do different. Citizens want to assume that animals will be treated humanely, that there are laws on the books to prevent cruelty. Uh, and people are usually surprised to learn there aren't. If people looked at what was happening, they'd be appalled. Most people would not support the type of abuse that has become common on factory farms. If you're wondering how this affects you, it already has. As long as we continue raising animals for food, the greater the chances of more zoonotic pandemics arising. And while COVID-19 may, may not have originated from the factory farm, it is certainly a direct result of our disregard for animals and nature in general. And finding and taking a vaccine will not prevent the next pandemic from occurring. Because let's not forget, swine flu, bird flu, mad cow disease, E. coli poisoning, salmonella poisoning, listeria are all the consequences of our food choices. Unless we change our perceptions towards animals, this will inevitably happen again. Oh, and speaking of perceptions, if you replace the animals in that video with dogs and cats, would you feel any different? Would you do anything to stop it? Now, I've been giving this presentation for over 14 years, and a lot has changed in that time. But the cruelty that we inflict upon cows, pigs, chickens, turkeys, and fish have remained exactly the same. 
and we continue to justify it by the story that we've been told. Now, 200 years ago, many people believed that slavery was necessary. And if you tried to reason with a slave owner, as I am trying to reason with you today, they would have tried to justify the cruelty they were causing. Now, I know many of you will continue to eat meat, dairy, eggs, and fish, but please do not for one second think that it is necessary. Just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. Now, every one of you could smoke cigarettes. Do you think that's necessary? Now, you could smoke a pack of cigarettes every day for the rest of your life, and well, you could live to 100, but what do you put your body at a greater risk of suffering from? Cancer, heart disease. Look, you could eat meat, dairy, eggs, and fish your entire life, and well, you could live to 100, but you put your body at a greater risk of suffering from degenerative diseases. You see, these leading cause of death and disease in the United States. In fact, every 34 seconds, somebody suffers a heart attack. Every 40 seconds, a stroke. And every day, 4,600 people are diagnosed with cancer in the United States, 4,600 every day. So how many of you know someone or knew someone who has or had cancer? How about somebody who suffered a heart attack? How about somebody with diabetes? So which box are you gonna fall into? Now, have you ever heard of a gorilla in the wild suffering from type two diabetes? You ever heard of a tiger suffering from atherosclerosis? You ever heard of an obese wildebeest? These animals don't suffer from these diseases because they're eating what's in their best interest. Perhaps we are not eating what is in our best interest. And yes, I am fully aware that some animals eat other animals. I get that. That's because one, they don't have a choice. Animals don't have a choice. We do. It's not like you're going to find a bunch of tigers at like some youth summit on a Zoom conference talking about how deer have feelings and the benefits of tofu. And two, it is in the best interest for a tiger to hunt, kill, and eat a deer. And besides, when did the actions of animals, that some animals eat other animals, become a justification for how we should act? It's funny because everybody wants to eat like a caveman but nobody wants to live in a cave. Oh, and if you're wondering about the circle of life, <laughs> what are you, Simba? This isn't the Lion King. This is a nightmare. 365 days out of the year, and you're playing the villain. Yet most people are opposed to animal cruelty. Most people don't want animals to suffer, yet most people don't want the killing to stop. No, they just want the killing to be done in a nicer way. You know, like kosher, halal, humane slaughter. <laughs> humane slaughter, what the hell is that? Tell you like rub a pig's belly, feed him some milk and cookies and chop his head off? Because if I did that to one of you, would everybody be like, well, at least she got her milk and cookies. Instead of trying to create a nicer system of killing, maybe it's time we stop the system of killing. And I know some of you might be thinking, yeah, but if I don't buy the bacon, somebody else will. So what does it matter, right? And what kind of logic is that? Is that the same logic you apply to the rest of your life? Because I guarantee when you go to bed tonight, some bad stuff is going to happen. Somebody's going to get shot and somebody's going to get robbed. Does that mean tomorrow morning when you wake up, you're going to be like, oh, man, you know what? I'm going to go rob somebody because it's going to happen no matter what. If you don't agree with murder and theft, don't participate in it. If you don't agree with what you saw in that video, you don't have to participate in it. It's completely unnecessary and unhealthy. So let's take a look we are participating in, how it affects the animals, our health, and the health of this planet. Now, these are battery cages. 95% of the eggs that we consume in the United States are coming from these conditions. A battery cage is literally the size of a milk crate. Four to five hens we put in a cage this size and have their beaks burned off without any painkillers. Why they burn their beaks off? Because they become aggressive toward each other in these conditions. They're not naturally aggressive. So how does the industry solve this problem? Simple, create a label, cage free, free range. Sounds pretty good. Looks pretty good too, right? Well, here's a cage-free farm, Virginia. See, according to the egg industry, this is what freedom looks like. Now, what's your definition of freedom? Does this apply? What about organic, though? We've all heard that's healthier, right? Well, considering that 80% of all the antibiotics produced in the United States are fed to farmed animals, 80%, oh, which, by the way, might help explain why 35,000 people die from antibiotic-resistant bacterial infections every year in the United States. So organic, it, it's got to be healthier, right? Well, for fruits and vegetables, it is. For meat, dairy, eggs, and fish, it ain't. You see, organic simply has to do with the food the animals are fed. No added hormones, sorry, uh, no antibiotics, no pesticides, and no added hormones. And, and I say added hormones because we eat young animals. We eat animals under the age of one. These animals are still growing, meaning they have naturally occurring growth hormones in their body at the time of slaughter. So no added hormones, 
no antibiotics, no pesticides. Now, these are three things you do not want to put in your body. However, organic has very little to do with conditioning animals are raised in. In fact, this is an organic egg farm, Wisconsin. So let me ask you something. Where do these animals go to the bathroom? And where they eat? And where they sleep? They eat, sleep, and defecate all in the same spot. Now, does that sound healthy to you? Even on old McDonald's farm, and good luck finding it, all male chicks born in the egg industry are thrown out at birth. The day they are born is the day they die. Why does the egg industry kill all the male chicks? They don't produce. They don't lay eggs. They don't go fast to meat. They don't fit in the equation. So they're doing all of this just so that we can eat this. Well, might as well know what it is. What is an egg? What do you put in your body? And please don't say baby chick. This is not a baby chick. It's not a fetus or an embryo either. It can't be because it's not fertilized, which is good news because seriously, why would you want to eat an abortion? So what is it? It's an unfertilized egg, which doesn't sound too bad at all, except when you realize that once a month, a woman will shed an unfertilized egg if she's not pregnant. What's that called? Congratulations, you're eating a hen's period. It's the unfertilized reproductive cycle of a hen. However, this is not a menstruation cycle. It's not a menstruation cycle because one, there's no blood, and two, they're not mammals. But it is the expulsion of an unfertilized egg, which by any other name is called a period. Now, you don't need to eat a hen's period any more than you need to eat a dog's period, a cat's period, or a woman's period. You don't need to eat anybody's period. And any nutritional benefit you get from a hen's period, you can get from a plant without the high cholesterol. You see, your body naturally makes cholesterol. Your body makes all the cholesterol you need. There's only type of good cholesterol what your body makes. Any cholesterol you bring in from the outside is bad. And there's only one way to get bad cholesterol. Animal products, meat, dairy, eggs, and fish all contain ridiculously high amounts of cholesterol. And when you apply cholesterol, what can that lead to? Heart disease, heart attacks, strokes, and ultimately death. In fact, Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. Now, let's not forget, though, that happy cows come from California. But even your happy cows in California hooked to the machines. Now, when does a cow start producing milk? She's got to be pregnant. She's got to give birth. There's no such thing as a magical cow that produces milk on command. She is a mammal. And like all mammals, she has to be pregnant to produce milk. So how does a cow become pregnant? No sex in the farm. Farmer's not going to wait for a cow and a bull to get on. He's not going to set the mood, light some candles, put in some drake. So how do you eat a cow pregnant without the bull? Artificial insemination. You see, the crazy thing I would do this to my female dog if I were to artificially inseminate my female dog so I could take my dog's milk and put on my cereal. You would say, what are you out of your freaking mind? You know, when it's done to a cow, it's considered normal. So uh, what's your definition of normal? Okay, now she's pregnant. She gives birth. What happens to her baby? Taken away. All male calves born dairy industry and lead tape taken from their mother. Chained by the neck to a wooden crate, deprived of this milk, but an inefficient diet, will never be able to turn around, will never see life day, and will live like this for eight to 18 weeks. At which point he'll then be shipped off to slaughter and convert to what we call veal. Veal is just a nice way of saying young, sick, baby, male, calf. If you are drinking cow's milk, the only reason is because a male calf chained to a box isn't. Why do this to the male calf born in the dairy industry? As opposed to a female, how is a male different? He doesn't produce, just like the male chicks in the egg industry. They don't make any money. But the female, oh, well, she does. And she'll be just like her mother, which is a constant cycle of artificial impregnation, birth, and milking. But she, too, will be taken away from her mother. Why take the female calf away from her mother? What happens if she stays? What's she going to do? Drink the milk. We don't want that, do we? So think the cow feels having her baby torn away from her. Well, the same way that you would feel if you had a baby and baby's torn away from you. It's called stress. Stress is the hormone cortisol released throughout the body. These animals are born into a life of stress. You do not pasteurize the stress out. It becomes part of the flesh, part of the meat, and part of the milk. Now, after about four to five years, the dairy cow no longer produces enough milk. She becomes unprofitable. What happens to all the unprofitable dairy cows in the dairy industry? They don't come here to Florida to retire. They get shipped off to slaughter, give her to hamburger meat. You ever wonder why it costs 99 cents for a hamburger McDonald's? It's because it's come to the most sick, abused animal on the planet. Animals too sick to even stand up. You pay for what you get. Oh, and just so we're clear, cows are producing 10 times the amount of milk they produce in nature. The hook to the machines two to three times a day. These machines of the udders cause bruising, swelling, and lacerations, cuts. The machine cannot tell the difference between milk and blood. That means that every glass of milk that you drink, even after it's pasteurized, because remember, pasteurization is not a removal process. It is a cooking sanitation process. So every glass of milk that you drink contains a little bit of blood and a little bit of pus. You know what pus is, right? Pus is when you have a pimple and you pop nasty white stuff that comes out. That's what you need milk and cheese. Bon appetit. Now, biologically speaking, okay, biologically speaking, in nature, who is a cow producing milk for? Her baby, her calf, her young, not for us. Just like when your mom was pregnant with you. Who is she producing milk for? 
for you, not for your daddy, not for the neighbor, not for the mailman, not for the dog, and not for the cat. Now, if your daddy was drinking your mother's milk, mother's pregnant with you, well, then your daddy was stealing your milk. If you're drinking cow's milk, you're stealing his milk. You see, where do all these animals get their milk from? Their mothers. We're the only species on this planet to take the milk from another animal. And if you don't think that's weird, if I brought a pregnant dog into your room right now, how many of you would be like, okay, maybe just a little. And when did these animals stop consuming milk? After infancy. We're the only species on this planet to continue drinking milk into adulthood. And if you really don't think it's weird to be drinking milk at your age and older, think about this. If your mom was pregnant right now, how many of you go up to your mom and say, hey, mom, can I have some of your milk? Yeah, don't, 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 don't do that. If you walk into Publix, Whole Foods, Winn-Dixie, any supermarket, come to the milk aisle, pick up a milk car instead of a happy cartoon cow on the cover, there's a picture of a happy cartoon chimpanzee. What you're holding in your hand right now is chimp milk on sale, two for one. What do you think? Now, why would it be nasty and disgusting to take the milk from a chimp and not nasty and disgusting to take the milk from a cow? Oh, because you've been told a story. But you know what? If you're drinking cow's milk and you can find yourself some chimp milk, I say make the switch. As disgusting as it is, it actually makes more sense for human beings to take the milk from a chimp than a cow. Why might that be? I don't know. Maybe because they share about 98% of our DNA. I mean, if you're going to take the milk from any animal, wouldn't you want to angle animals closest to us? Last I checked, we don't look anything like a cow. Look, a calf at birth weighs 90 pounds. That calf grew to 500 pounds in nine months. They can put on 410 pounds in under a year. Man, there's only one product in nature that can make an animal grow that fast. What's that? Hormones. And that's what milk is. Milk is composed of natural occurring growth hormones. And if you're thinking you're drinking organic milk and not getting those growth hormones, think again. This is organic milk. It doesn't say no hormones. It says no added hormones. It'd be like if I said to you, I got some peanut butter with no added peanuts. Peanut butter is peanuts. Cow's milk is a growth hormone. And this growth hormone is meant for one animal and one animal only, a cow. Look, you have to understand milk is specific to every individual species. Here's what I mean. A cow go to 2,000 pounds in two years because they drink from this milk, cow milk, growth hormones meant baby calf as an infant. Why put a growth hormone meant for a 2,000 pound animal into this? Logically speaking, it's illogical. So how do you justify an illogical act? You create a story. Now every story has an author. Who is the author of this story? Who came up with this quote? The dairy industry. And what is the ultimate goal of the dairy industry? Look, is this about your health or is this about money? Because what about I said to you, there's a new story going around. Bacon, it does a body good. Would you believe that? Look, nobody's eating bacon for health reasons. Nobody goes on a bacon diet. It doesn't do a body good. In fact, the World Health Organization classifies processed meat and red meat as probable cause of cancer, in particular colon, prostate, and pancreatic cancers. So obviously bacon doesn't do a body good. So what's it high in? Saturated fat, cholesterol, sodium, and nitrates. Well, guess what? Milk and cheese is loaded with saturated fat, and loaded with cholesterol. In fact, how many glasses of milk does the dairy industry, as well as our government, take a look at the food pyramid, which by the way was highly influenced by the dairy industry. So how many glasses of milk does our government tell us we need to drink every day? Two to three glasses. Now, if you follow the government's advice and drink three glasses of 2% milk, not whole milk, three glasses of 2% milk have the same amount of cholesterol as 15 slices of bacon. If I said to you, you need to eat 15 slices of bacon every day for the rest of your life to be healthy, would you believe that? In fact, what percentage of the human population is lactose intolerant? Because I'm a little confused. Maybe you can help me out here. Because if milk does a body good, why would 65% of the human population be lactose intolerant? 65%. You know what? Let me put that another way. 5 billion people are lactose intolerant. 5 billion with a B. 5 billion people are lactose intolerant. That means that two every three people on this planet, when they drink milk or eat cheese, and what is cheese? Just spoiled rotten milk. They suffer one of these symptoms. Diarrhea, stomach ache, gasness, bloated, cramps, ear infection, excess mucus. If you suffer many symptoms when you drink milk, eat cheese, congratulations. You're normal. It is normal to be lactose intolerant. Here's the reason why. All mammals, and human beings are mammals, have an enzyme known as lactase. That enzyme breaks down the sugar known as lactose. However, as all mammals mature, including human beings, we lose that enzyme. That's why you don't see dogs nursing on their mother after infancy, cats nursing on their mother after infancy. This is why you're not going to go and nurse on your mother, because you're not an infant. And if you did, it'd be freaking disgusting. But hey, it must be good for kids, right? Because every school I've been to can be guaranteed that cow's milk will be served in the cafeteria. Yet cow's milk is one of the most common food allergies among infant children. So how do you justify the logical acts? Oh, right, the story. What's in cow's milk that builds strong bones? What builds? strong bones. 
calcium, right? But just important as calcium for strong bones is exercise. I mean, think about it. If all you do all day is consume calcium, it's in your couch, but consume calcium, it's in your couch. Are you going to have strong bones? Of course not. You got to exercise. Whether you're running, jogging, jump ropes, push ups, pull ups, whatever activities, playing a sport, doing yoga, you have to exercise. Also important for strong bones, vitamin D. Vitamin D is added to cow's milk. You know, the original source of vitamin D? The sun, and it's free. All you need is about 10 to 15 minutes of sun if day is not primary in South Florida. So vitamin D, exercise, and calcium are important for strong bones. But my question for you is, is this the best source of calcium for human beings? Let's find out. What countries drink a lot of milk, cow's milk? What do you think? United States, England, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Canada. It's pretty much North American Europe. Now, does anybody know what osteoporosis is? What is osteoporosis? You can actually break it up into two words. Osteo is bones, porous is holes. So it's, it's literally holes in the bones. Or another way of saying it would be a loss of bone density. So it's, it's weak bones. Now, maybe you've been taught drink cow's milk, get strong bones. So what country do you think have the highest rate of weak bones? United States, England, Sweden, Finland. <laughs> well, that sucks. Because I thought all we do is drink less cow's milk to get strong bones. It's funny that's where we're taught, yet why does every supermarket sell calcium supplements? No, seriously, why would we need calcium in the United States? We can't even go a day with any cheese. If milk does a body good, why would 53 million Americans either suffer from osteoporosis or be at high risk of getting it? 53 million? Man, I thought cow's milk is supposed to do the trick. The thing is, that's all it is. It's just a trick. In fact, the Harvard University study that followed 75,000 women for 12 years showed that increased intake of calcium milk dairy products did not lower the risk of osteoporosis. So what about your cereal? Problem solved, your milk for the plants. Soy milk, rice milk, oat milk, hemp milk, flax milk, cashew milk, coconut milk, almond milk. They even have hazelnut milk. They got macadamia milk. They got pea milk. It's like the worst name for a milk, but it comes from peas. They come in four flavors, vanilla, chocolate, unsweetened, and original. I guarantee you'll like at least one. Public sells them all, Whole Foods sells them all, even Target, Walmart, Costco's, Beads, and Dixie sells the popular brands. And the great thing with plant milks is they all contain the exact amount of calcium as cow's milk, 150 milligrams per half a glass. So what's the difference? There's no side effects. There's no blood, no pus, no cholesterol, little to no saturated fat. It's a win-win situation. No animal has to suffer or die for your appetite or your health. But to be honest, if you want calcium, just go directly to the source. By the way, these plant milks are less environmentally intensive as cow's milk. So I know almond milk does require a lot of water. Almonds are very water intensive, but not as intense as, as, as cow's milk or goat milk or other, any other animal milk you might want to drink. But keep in mind, the original source of calcium comes from the plants. This is also the original source of iron. In fact, who is the largest, strongest land animal on earth? Who is the largest land animal? By the way, these are actual answers given by high school kids in South Florida. <laughs> Please don't say dinosaur. Largest land animal on earth is obviously the elephant. And what does the elephant's diet consist of? Plants. Are you going to tell an elephant you start drinking cow's milk with strong bones? He gets all his cows from the plants. So do these plants look healthy? Well, here's what's not healthy. 68% of all diseases are diet related. That's a government statistic. I got good news. I got bad news. Bad news, that means that three to five, you might become part of the statistic. We don't change what you eat. The good news, 68% of all diseases are preventable. Is the 68% of all diseases coming to the image on the left or the right? Have you ever heard of somebody suffering a heart attack because they too many oranges, sweet potatoes, and broccoli? In fact, what clogs arteries? It's not bread. Cholesterol and saturated fat clog arteries. Well, guess what? Animal products are loaded with cholesterol. Plants don't contain any dietary cholesterol. Animal products high in saturated fat. Plants, little to no saturated fat. And you get no fiber from the animal product. And what is fiber good for? Going to the bathroom, taking a crap. If you have trouble doing it, eat some more plants. Fiber is only found in plants. And you get no complex carbohydrates from the animal product. You need complex carbohydrates for energy, which your body runs on. It's the original fuel for your brain. Complex carbohydrates only found in plants, like root vegetables, beans, peas, lentils, whole grains. However, not all carbohydrates create equal. You want complex carbohydrates, and you want to avoid simple refined carbohydrates. Let me give you some examples of simple refined carbohydrates. White flour, white sugar, white bread. If it's white, it ain't right. Coca-Cola is the devil. Look, our diets are way too high in sugar and way too high in sodium. So without a doubt, this is definitely part of the 68% of all diseases. And look, as much as I despise these corporations, at least they're not coming out and saying, it does a body good. Because that's exactly what the meat, dairy, and fisties are doing. Look, we live in a culture that feeds off of sickness, disease, and ignorance. Uh, let me prove it to you. When you watch TV, what commercials do you see for food? McDevils, Murder King, Domino's, Pizza Hut, Papa John's, Red Lobster, Outback Steakhouse, Chili's, Arby's, Sonic. What are they all trying to sell you? Meat, dairy, eggs, and fish. And then what commercials do you see in between the meat, dairy, eggs, and fish? 
You need some Pepto-Bismol? Help some Rolaids. Maybe some Tums. You got heartburn? Don't worry, we got you covered. Need some Metamucil, Abisbobicin, the fiber diet, can take a crap? Don't worry, we got you covered. Need some Centricale, some Caltrade. You got weak bones or osteoporosis? Don't worry, we got you covered. Need some Weight Watchers, have a Jenny Craig, diet pills, overweight? Don't worry, we got you covered. Need some Lipitor, Abisgrestorm, is Abipro, get high blood pressure, high cholesterol? Don't worry, we got you covered. Need some Levitra, it's Viagra, can't get it up? Don't worry, we got you covered. It's funny how all the foods that we're told we're supposed to eat now comes its own pill. So how do you adjust the logical acts? <laughs> oh, right, the story. Look, there's over 11 million vegetarians living in the United States. Have you ever heard of vegetarian going to the hospital for lack of protein? It's unheard of. In fact, the number one question I get asked all the time is, James, man, what about your protein? Where, where do you get your protein from? I get it from Publix. Where do you get yours from? It's not about where you get your protein. It's about how many grams of protein you need, because most people have no clue. So how many grams of protein does the average male, female adult need? Well, according to the World Health Organization, all you need is about 46 grams of protein per day. Now, if you're an athlete, you can double, triple, quadruple this. But please, let me show you how easy it is to get 46 grams of protein without eating meat, dairy, eggs, or fish. You take a cup of beans, a cup of brown rice, and a cup of broccoli. Now, it's very healthy, nutritious, inexpensive meals. Meal is dirt cheap, plus it's environmentally more friendly than consuming animal products. And it has about 25 grams of protein. Just like that, you're halfway there. A peanut butter jelly sandwich on whole wheat bread with a glass of soy milk has about 20 grams of protein. One can, okay, one can of kidney beans has 24 grams of protein. I'm not a big fan of buying canned foods, but I do want to show you how ridiculously easy and cheap it is to get protein. One cup of almonds, 28 grams of protein. Everything you see up here is composed of protein. As long as you get enough calories, you'll get enough protein. As long as you eat food and Americans have no problem eating, you'll get enough protein. In fact, you can get every essential amino acid from plants. But I do have a confession. I love chicken. I love chicken. But the chicken egg does not come from a dead carcass of a chicken. No, it might come from a plant. It's called veggie chicken. However, it looks and tastes the same as the chicken you eat. The reason why is because they smoke it, cook it, grill it, fry it, bake it, and put the same spices, herbs, and seasoning that you put on dead chickens to make dead chickens taste good. Look, you're not eating meat for flavor. You're eating meat for texture. If you think you're eating meat for flavor, go outside, find yourself a squirrel, and eat them. Nobody looks at roadkill and goes, oh, that looks pretty appetizing. You have to decorate death. If you can put a man or woman on the moon, how hard is to make a plant taste like a chicken? It's not that hard. This will fool even the biggest meat eater. Every supermarket sells it. Each box is 44 grams of protein. There's just as much protein in the veggie chicken as actual chicken. And uh, by the way, I know I'm a skinny white guy. Oh, we, we have we have this incredibly high rates of obesity, and yet we continue to talk about like protein, like we've got some kind of deficiency. <laughs> even our dogs and cats are overweight. And yes, I know I'm a skinny white guy, so I don't have protein without any meat, but uh, these athletes aren't skinny. They're all vegetarians. They all get enough protein, as do the half of the Tennessee Titans linemen who have adopted a plant-based diet, as well as these guys who are primarily herbivorous, who also live the longest. Go figure. Your body is like a car. Put the right fuel in it. This is the right fuel for your body, okay? This is where all nutrients originate from. What you're doing is you're filtering nutrients through somebody else, somebody else's body, and then you're eating their body, okay? Uh, the higher up you go in the food chain, the more energy you lose. If you don't like pyramids, if you're like anti-pyramid, if you got something against pyramids, here's a plate. This is the right fuel for our body, according to our anatomy. Look, I know we're omnivorous, all right? I know we can consume animal products and, and plants, but... Like from an anatomy perspective, we look far similar to herbivores. How so? We got dull teeth. We chew our food. We uh, don't make a chomping motion like an alligator or crocodile. We don't have claws to rip through flesh. In fact, if I brought a pig into your room right now and asked you to kill a pig with your claws, the pig would probably enjoy it more than anything else. Oh, and, and just because you can create weapons, uh, how does that change your anatomy? Which is good because actually Simba can craft the food out back uh, faster, which is good because once you put bacon in your body, it's just a dead animal. It's decomposing flesh. It's bacteria. Uh, and speaking of uh, toxicity, what do these two things have in common? Natty, almost done. Um, nearly all fish and seafood contain some amount of mercury, chemicals known to cause cancer, birth defects, and other reproductive harm. So now we're going to start talking about the environment. All right. By the way, the original source of omega-3, flax seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds, walnuts, plants. Okay. Without the cholesterol, without the mercury poisoning. Now, I don't know if you noticed in that video, but there was tons of... You see, when you raise 9 billion cows, pigs, chickens, turkeys for food, it generates a lot of waste. In fact, animal agriculture produces 130 times more excrement than the entire U.S. population. That is a lot of, so where's it all going? Our rivers and streams. Animal agriculture is the leading cause of blue rivers and streams in the United States. The meat and dairy industries are using our rivers and streams as a toilet. And no, that is not chocolate. And it's not just affecting our water supply and our soil, it's affecting the air as well. You see, all of this waste generates lots of gases, in particular methane, which is 30 times more potent than carbon dioxide. In fact, raising animals for food generates more greenhouse gases than all the cars, planes, ships, and trains in the world combined. Oh, and um, 
Let's not forget that animal agriculture is the leading cause of deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. The fires raging the Amazon have been raging for decades. It's just now all of a sudden we decided to talk about it. And it's happy because cattle ranches are burning the rainforest so they can graze cattle so we can have beef. But all of this is completely unsustainable and a complete waste of resources. Look, it takes more land, more water, and more crops to raise animals for food than to just grow plants directly for human consumption. In fact, in terms of land, it takes about 164 square feet of land to produce just one pound of beef. Yet it takes only 12 square feet of land to produce one pound of Beyond Meat, a plant-based burger made from pea protein. In terms of water, it takes about 520 gallons of water to produce just one pound of chicken. Yet it takes only 302 gallons of water to produce one pound of tofu, which by the way has more iron, calcium, and protein per calories than chicken. In terms of milk, it takes about 880 gallons of water to produce just one gallon of cow's milk. Yet it takes only 250 gallons of water to produce one gallon of soy milk. And in terms of crops, 50% of the grains grown worldwide are fed to farmed animals instead of people. 40% of the corn grown in the United States is consumed by livestock, poultry, and fish. We're feeding corn to fish. And 70% of the soybeans grown in the United States are fed to cows, pigs, and chickens. 70%. So if you have an irrational fear of soy, I suggest you stop eating animals. Because most of the soy grown in the United States are fed to farmed animals. So all of this soy, corn, and other grains we grow to feed animals. And yet for some reason, every 3.6 seconds, someone dies of starvation. One two, three, something is seriously screwed up with the story that we've been told. Some stories are just not worth repeating. It is time for a new story, a story based upon health and compassion. And that story begins with you. It begins with what you eat. And that's the big question, James, what the hell do you eat? Look, you're not gonna see me with my hands and knees chewing on grass. I eat everything you eat. There is no sacrifice. The sacrifice only meat, eggs, and fish. I'll sacrifice the animal's life, my health, and the health of this planet. And before you say it costs more money, I don't mind spectra dollar in my almond milk, coconut milk, or oat milk. If it's healthier for me and it is, I'm saving money in the long run. People are more concerned about what they wear on their body than what they put in their body. Because I don't hear anybody complaining about drop 150 in a pair of Air Jordans, okay? So if you're more concerned about what's on your feet and less concerned about what's in your body, you need to change your priorities, all right? This is better for the environment. Eat lower on the food chain. Eat lower on the food chain for the animals. Eat lower on the food chain for your health, okay? This is what I call transition food. It's processed. If you really care about your health, go directly to the source. This will help your place to meet dairy, eggs, and fish. Even though it's processed, it is still healthier for you, for the animals, and for the environment. So let's go shopping, okay? So really quickly, all of these products are plant-based. There is no dairy in any of these products. There's no egg in this product. There's dairy-free cheeses to go in your pizza and your mac and cheese. There is dairy-free ice cream. We got coconut milk ice cream, cashew milk ice cream, soy milk ice cream, almond milk ice cream, even Breyers, haagen Doss, and Ben & Jerry's offer dairy-free ice cream. Look for the non-dairy words. Different veggie poultry, veggie chicken, veggie turkey, my Thanksgiving dinner, no animal to suffer. And instead of beef, veggie burgers, my personal favorite, Beyond Meat. Check it out at TGI Fries Burger Fi. Even Denny's now sells it. Can't believe I'm saying this. Denny's has something good. Check out Gardein, over two dozen products in the market. Uh, by the way, Publix does a lot of two-for-one sales. Instead of pork, they got veggie dogs, veggie ham, veggie sausages, veggie bacon. Instead of fish, instead of eating to see animal, I'm eating to see vegetables. So if you're looking for these products, look for the word vegan, look for the vegan symbol, or simply read the ingredients. And everything you see up here is vegan. There's no meat, dairy, eggs, or fish. It's all cruelty-free. It's all cholesterol-free. It is all vegan. But before you get excited, this is all crap, okay? It's so what your diet looks like. You're going to die. This is terrible food. Just because something's vegan doesn't mean it's healthy. However, if you eat an appropriate, balanced vegan diet of fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, nuts, and seeds, you'll get all nutritional needs met and at every stage of the life cycle, according to the largest organization of dietitians in the United States. The last thing I want to leave you, I can't believe I'm actually going to leave you with this, but look, I said in the beginning, imagine aliens took over and they started destroying the planet. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm asking you to still eat. Eat. Go to these terrible places. You can get vegan options. In fact, Murder King has an all vegan burger and it's scary good. Just say no mayo. It's got no cholesterol. It's got less saturated fat. It's got 17 grams of protein check this out. It's got 95, it, it, it uses 95% less land. It uses 74% less water and produces 87% less greenhouse gas emissions. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but Murder King is actually a solution to the, some of the problems that we have, all right? It's not healthy at all, but it's certainly healthier than eating a hamburger. And it's certainly better for the environment, a hundred times healthier for the environment. And it's a hundred times healthier for animals. So that's how easy this can be. Don't give anything up. Just replace the food you're eating with something that's sustainable. All right. That's all you got to do. All of this stuff up here is sustainable. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the chat box a starter kit. So I'm going to put that in right now. 
it's a download. You can just download it um, by clicking uh, the this link that I'm putting in the st in, into the chat box right now. So there you go. On that link is my email address, which is james at arff.org. So if you guys have any questions, you can always email me at james at arff.org. And again, that starter kit has everything I just talked about. It has over 100 different vegan products in it. And uh, yeah, good luck. Any questions, thoughts, comments, arguments before I stop talking? Okay, yeah, if you're in other countries, um, yeah, you're, you're gonna have a little bit harder time getting some of those processed foods, but eat what comes from the earth. That's the healthiest way. And that is the most sustainable way as well. I'm just kind of trying to go through the chat box to see. Uh, somebody beyond meat has a strong chemical smell. Um, well, I mean, it's just pea protein and they use, um, they do use, uh, uh, I forget what it's called, hex, 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 something like hexon, which um, they've, they've done tests on. It's, it, it is safe in, in that small amount. I mean, large amounts are, are deadly or like at least like maybe carcinogen, sorry, carcinogen, but, um, but on the small dose, they're, they're, they're okay. Um, I know that doesn't sound too, too great, but um, I think it's just a step in the right direction. I actually think that we're going to be going to clean meat, uh, which is lab grown meat and hopefully the next 20, 30 years. And that will solve all this problem because it will be a hundred times more sustainable than any, any animal product. And it will actually be more sustainable than, than vegan processed food. So uh, it can feed billions of people and you're just taking tissue cultures from animals, which is the same as like just doing a blood test, a blood sample from yourself. And you can produce billions of uh, animal based products without killing the animal. So that's what I hope to see in the future until then impossible foods beyond meat and, um, and Gardein. Uh, they are processed, so if you're concerned about that, just eat what comes directly from the earth. But keep in mind, even though they're processed, there's still zero cholesterol, less saturated fat. There's no naturally, there's no, there's no animal growth hormones. There's no stress hormones. So it is, it is a healthier alternative. It does have about the same amount of protein, and it has fiber, which you get from no animal product. It has complex carbohydrates, you get from no animal product. And um, the sodium content might be slightly higher, not at, not always, but sometimes it is. But don't be concerned about sodium and not concerned about cholesterol and saturated fat. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? I know we're kind of out of time, but. Yeah, mushrooms are a great meat substitute. Somebody wrote that, yeah. Portobello mushrooms are awesome and they're healthy. You can make a beet burger, you can make a lentil burger, you can make a, a rice and bean burger, you can make a sweet potato burger. Uh, school, schools serve meat and they serve mystery meat and uh, cow's milk because they, the government subsidized the meat and dairy industry. So they buy up the surplus. The largest dairy corporation in the United States, Dean Foods, went bankrupt. They filed for bankruptcy. But the reason why they're still in business is because the government props it up. So don't think the government is going to solve this problem. They're completely complicit with this. And that's why every school I've been to, I've been to elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, universities, even prisons. I've been to over 100 different uh, academic facilities and every one of them has mystery meat and cow's meat. Uh, sorry, mystery meat and cow's milk because the government wants it that way. They get you addicted from a very young age and uh, it's just, it's all about money. So bring your own food in or you are the customer. Remember, whenever you go in the cafeteria, you're the customer. So what is it? The customer is always right. Talk to the food manager, talk to the cafeteria manager and say, hey, look, can you get soy milk or almond milk or some other plant milk? Especially if you get the entire school on board, power in numbers, start a petition. Nothing wrong with asking. Yeah, you can you can go to, uh, I mean, you can email me and, and I can help you with that. Um, but uh, HSUS, Humane Society of the United States, they, do, they deal with that. They deal with uh, getting schools to promote more vegetarian and vegan options. Um, and they're really good at it. They do Meatless Mondays. And that's, man, a lot of schools, there's been schools in Broward, Miami-Dade and Palm Beach County that have adopted that. They've done veggie burgers. But if the students don't recognize that it's there and if they don't realize why it's important, then it doesn't, it doesn't succeed. So that's why you need, to inf you need information, you need education. That's what school is about, right? Educate. So you guys, you guys can, can talk to, you know, to your peers, do a presentation on this stuff. 
I do these presentations all the time. It's free. So if you want me to present at your school, everything's virtual now. So I can present anywhere um, on, this, on this planet. <laughs> as long as there's access to internet, I can do it. Uh, if you guys don't have the option to go vegan right now because of family, try to educate your family. If you can't educate your family, do the best you can. However, sometimes the best way to get through to somebody's mind is to go through your stomach. So if you're concerned about what your parents might think, make them a vegan meal, something really basic like spaghetti with marinara sauce and meatless meatballs. Gardein sells meatless meatballs. They're amazing. Do not tell your, do not tell your family it's vegan. Okay, Don't tell them it's vegan. After they eat it, if they like it, tell them it's vegan. If they don't like it, don't tell them it's vegan. But if they like it, tell them it's vegan and tell them what that means. No animal to suffer die. It means there's no cholesterol, there's little enough to do fat, no animal growth hormones, no stress hormones, and it's got the same amount of uh, protein. It's a win-win situation. So try to educate people by going through their stomach um, and show them videos. There's documentaries out there. Um, there's this presentation, there's books. There's a lot of information out there. So just try to educate. Thank you guys for participating. Thank you for for also engaging. Somebody said, after 14 years with limited change, how do you remain so motivated? I mean, I don't know what else to do. I mean, I can't, I, I just can't let this keep happening. So, you know, I think change is happening. It's just slow. It's like every other social movement, it takes a while. And these animals can't stand and bear arms. So it's up to us to, to make that difference. But it will happen. Maybe not in our lifetime, but I'd like to be on the right side of history. Let me see, any other questions? Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, somebody asked about corn. Corn is um, it's, it's a vegan vegetarian company, and it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a weird. Uh, I think it's like some kind of plant that you don't really find anywhere. Um, I haven't had too many corn products. I think it's the only like plant that actually has a has a cholesterol content where it's actually they they have to put it on the box because plants have cholesterol, but it's so minimal minuscule, so it's considered non dietary cholesterol. But corn, for some reason has actually a cholesterol content. But I don't, I don't know too much about corn. They do have, a, I, I think, about a half a dozen vegan items, products. Mr. Wildman, thank you for your presentation. We Thanks. have to end the meeting now. Though. Okay, great. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye, guys.